Emirates. U.S. may allow India to continue importing oil from Iran after the 4th of November, even as it is determined to reimpose sanctions. A total of eight countries are likely to get a waiver, mainly because U.S. wants to maintain global supply and prevent a huge spike in prices. Sources say this relief is temporary and U.S. wants India to further cut oil imports from Iran. Just yesterday, the United States withdrew duty-free concessions or GSP benefits for 50 Indian products, which affects 5.7 billion worth of Indian labor-intensive exports. What's the road ahead? Will it be more difficult to arrive at a trade package which we have been negotiating with the United States for the last couple of months? And will India also get concessions on steel and aluminium tariffs? Let's uh, get straight to our discussion. Joining us this evening, former diplomat and ambassador KC Singh, former DIPP secretary Ajay Shankar and Eurasia Group's uh, director for Asia, Shailesh Kumar. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Ambassador KC Singh, coming to you first, what do you think prompted the United States to grant India a waiver from oil sanctions? I think you answered it yourself very correctly. Uh, they must have made an assessment that in view of the turbulence uh, with Saudi Arabia, Khashoggi's problem, uh, internal uh, churn within Saudi Arabia, overall supply and demand globally could not be matched by Saudi Arabia or by others. Now, they don't want that. They don't want a spike in oil prices. So they give it a temporary respite, but they'll keep the pressure on because don't make, a, make any mistake at all that we are dealing with a very transactional president who believes that all trade has to be balanced. Uh, therefore, any imbalance in trade with any country, he equates with loss of jobs for America. And therefore, he is dealing with each country independently, uh, irrespective of him being told that mm. this is global trade. And the U.S. was the leader in saying we need free trade, globalization. And therefore, what you lose in one country, you gain somewhere else. But that's not how Trump operates. Mm. Mm. That's right. Ajay Shankar, if I can get you in, uh, we know very well, and this is something that Ambassador Casey Singh was also pointing out, that he has been very insistent on bridging this trade deficit of $27 billion. There's a lot of talk about Harley Davidson whenever he talks about the trade deficit. The New York Times, in fact, joked about his obsession with the Harley Davidson. Uh, but how do you see the developments over the last few days? Today, there was a waiver from uh, oil sanctions. No formal statement yet. Yesterday, there was a withdrawal of GSP benefits for 50 products. Uh, the withdrawal of GSP was anticipated and expected, and it is not hitting us too hard. As far as the trade talks are concerned, they are on, and I think India is trying to be quite reasonable and constructive, and therefore one can hope that some reasonable package would emerge. But taking a more medium and long-term view, I think we have to accept that this president of the United States would like to show victory domestically on the trade front, and that would be paramount for him. So we have to ca calibrate our medium mm. to long-term long strategy, recognizing this political reality mm. within the United States. So given the other strategic mm. interests with us, some accommodation would be realistic, but the need for optical victories mm. would continue. Right, because he's a man completely guided by national interests. He wants to show a victory on uh, home soil. But uh, going across to Shailesh, Shailesh, when you deal with the president, he, he, and he also he needs to project to his domestic. Also, he needs to project to his domestic. Yeah, he needs to project to his, his needs to project to his domestic audience. Exactly, Shailesh Kumar. When you have a president who wants to show a victory back home, you've got midterm elections coming, you've got a State of the Union address in January, then how should we really look at uh, this waiver from Iran sanctions? Do you think India has anything to cheer about at this stage? Uh, so a few, few, ideas, few thoughts. First is there's trade issues and then there's the Iran issue, and I wouldn't conflate the two. So the Iran issue or the Iran waiver sanction is less about trade and more about politics or geopolitics in this case. So if you take, keep in mind that you know one of Trump's biggest c complaints earlier was the Iran deal, and one of the first actions he took was to remove the Iran deal, this is what this India waiver is about ultimately. It doesn't have to do with trade as much. Yes, there is a concern on the U.S. side that if Iran output comes off of the market, that prices will go up, and that will be a problem for America. That's a very valid point. But ultimately, what the U.S. wants is nobody to do business with Iran, period. Now, what the waiver, is it, a, is it something to be happy about? I think it is. 
because this is more than just a waiver for oil. What's happened behind the scenes is India has very aggressively and properly showed the U.S. side why the Iranian relationship is important to India strategically. They've made a very good point to say that if the U.S. strategy in Afghanistan needs to succeed, and if the U.S. wants India to have a role in Afghanistan going forward, then Iran is critical and the port of Chabahar is critical and relations with Iran are critical, and the U.S. side has realized this. And so that's mm -hmm. also what needs to be thought of, I think, when the waiver comes into place. Now, on the political side, most of the right. U.S. audience, to be honest, doesn't really understand what's going on with India-Iran relations, the waiver, oil price, or oil trade, or, and so forth. So ultimately, I think, yes, India mm -hmm. should be pleased with this. Granted, it's a short-term waiver. It's not a full-term waiver. But I think there's a, there's a typical knee-jerk mm -hmm. reaction, which is, well, this should have been done a long time ago, and this isn't fair. And I think those are all valid criticisms and complaints. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this was not really easy on the U.S. Okay. side either. The administration was boxed in by the president. They, the bureaucrats were able to deliver on this mm -hmm. based on India's concerns. And I think that's a very important point. Mm -hmm. Ambassador Casey Singh, Ajay Shankar, Shailesh Kumar, thank you very much for joining us on CNBC TV8.